All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. Today, me and Nick here, we're doing a preview and prediction for Michigan versus Iowa. Fourth ranked Wolverines head to Kinnick Stadium to take on the Hawkeyes. Ten and a half point line in favor of Michigan. Over under set at 42. All time in this game, 43 to 15 to 4. Michigan leads in the series. They've won the last two. And this one will be on Fox 12 Eastern time. Getting things started with this Michigan offense, Nick. It's been a very interesting group for Michigan. 50 points per game. The non conference schedule is awful. You know, they really ran it up. Played Maryland this past week. Ran the ball very well, as expected. But Blake Corman, man, he took off in routes 34 points for this football team. He did everything. He's up to 478 yards and nine touchdowns on the year. 243 yards against the Terrapins. He had two scores in that game. Eight yards per carry. Just complete domination. Uh, you know, he, he ripped off plenty of long runs against that defense. He was really their entire offense with his legs because the passing game was not great. J.J. McCarthy, we finally got our wish. He's the starter. You know, I predicted in the preseason that he would be the starter after this Iowa game. I thought that's when he would get inserted in Kinnick Stadium and that he would be the starter the rest of the year. Overall, it was a pretty solid game, I thought, against Maryland. 220 and two touchdowns. Made some really good throws. Completed 69%. But there was times where he took a lot of negative plays. He's a heck of an improviser, but I think that really gets him in trouble. Kind of reminds you of Bo Nix. That was one of his biggest problems as a freshman. He would just... He, you know, there's you had to take the bad with the good, and that's what you certainly got. McCarthy, I think he's certainly on that path right now. He does not continue to, you know, be smarter with the ball. You know, sometimes you got to know when to eat it. McCarthy's really not learned that yet. He's a young quarterback coming into Kinnick. This is a massive uh, start for him. Big time road test. Five of twelve on third down was this Michigan offense, but some just didn't seem right. Nick, you know, the passing game they were very efficient in terms of being effective. They weren't all that there. You know, Ronnie Bell. I'm glad he's back. Team high, 253 yards and 17 grabs. Luke Schoonmaker next up with 10 receptions. Roman Wilson, he's been a big-time playmaker, 24 yards per catch. He's got 196 and three scores on the year. Cornelius Johnson, he's their you know high-point guy. He's got to get the ball. Tough team. What are your expectations for McCarthy? And how do you feel he played last week in his real big, first big test as a starter? Right, this team has been playing non-conference against you know a bunch of joke teams: UConn, Hawaii, Colorado State. Nothing to really look at at all. Then they played Maryland this week. Struggled a little bit. The game was a lot closer than I thought it would be. But McCarthy looked composed in the pocket at times. Yes, he makes mistakes, but he is a freshman. You know, you know at the end of the day, you know that's going to be expected from a young player like him. He's 80% completion percentage on the season, 693 yards, 48 of 60 with his completion with completions and attempts. You know, I like the stats so far this year. You know, five touchdowns through the air for him as well. McCarthy also adds that ability to run on the ground, 78 yards on the ground, 6.5 yards per carry for him so far this season. I like to see him continue to get comfortable. You know, it's nice that he's having weapons that are finally producing for him. Ronnie Bell, you know, obviously his go-to target. Bell's having a good season so far. Wilson, though, has been shocking me a little bit. You know, three touchdowns for him on the season. You, you hit the head with the 24 and a half points or yards per catch. I like to continue to see this offense evolve throughout the season. I think McCarthy is definitely the right choice at quarterback. We both agreed in the preseason that K. McManera was not the future for Michigan. And I think this is the right direction of J.J. McCarthy. He's really going to continue to develop as a quarterback and will only get better with time. I like the direction this offense is going for sure. Now, this wasn't the case last season, but for the most part on Harbaugh's tenure, it's been the same old story when they play defenses like this where, you know, they run the ball very well during the year when they play in Iowa or Wisconsin. They get stonewalled and the passing game does nothing. But McNamara last year was very solid, gave them good balance, was an above average game manager for them. McCarthy, though, he's a legit difference maker. So even if they get completely stopped here on the ground, I do think they can overcome that. Last year against Iowa in a Big Ten title game, 42 to 3 win. Had great balance, 461 yards, almost seven and a half yards per play. There was a lot of creativity in that game. They completely blew them out of the water. But you know, this one, now they move from a neutral site last year. Two different, very different football teams than they were yeah, a couple months ago last December. Now this one's going to be played in Iowa. Michigan offensive front is phenomenal. Trent Jones at right tackle. Zach Zinter at guard. I love him. Trevor Keegan's a veteran. And then Victor Olomati uh, comes over from Virginia. He was you know one of the top center in college football last year, already off to a really good start. So this offensive line is really going to lead the way. Um, overall, you know, Nick, what are your final thoughts? What do you expect? Do you expect a really good game? Do you expect you know, to be mid on Saturday? We'll get to the Iowa defense in a minute. But most people know what to expect, especially when they go on the road here. And, again, this is McCarthy's first road start, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. So, very big test here. You've seen him at Michigan State last year. You know, made a few bad plays when he got this. He didn't get the start, but he played a good bit on the road last year, and they lost that game. So, how do you expect McCarthy to perform here? It's a big road test. 
It's all about McCarthy. You know, staying composed and keeping his cool on the road. It's going to be loud at Kinnick on Saturday. And this is a big game for Iowa. They had a tough start to the season on offense, but then they kind of recovered in the last few weeks or so. They've been playing a little bit better football. Played well against Rutgers this past weekend. So this is a real opportunity for this Iowa team to kind of continue to build off the start that they're having and kind of get this defense rocking early on. That stadium's going to be very loud for sure. McCarthy's going to have to keep his head cool, keep focused, kind of be trying to find that comfort zone. Hopefully they can kind of run the ball. I, th I know, like you said, you know, Michigan's had trouble running against defenses like Iowa, Wisconsin. If they can find a nice balance to be able to carry the ball, if Blake Corm can get a couple of yards here and there, especially early on, that could definitely help McCarthy and go a long way in settling him early on in this offense. Corm is definitely going to be the tone setter for the Wolverines. Looking at the Iowa offense, you know, it's a complete opposite flip of the script here. 17 points per game for Iowa. Uh, you know, coming into the year, you kind of figured they were really going to struggle. But, man, this has been disappointing. They scored seven points each in the first two weeks. The week one, though, was via two safeties. Pretty odd. H under 166 total yards in both of those first two games. Got things going a bit against Nevada. You know, 5.5 yards per play, 337 yards total. Had some balance. Same to be said about the Rutgers game. You know, they're held to 277 total yards. But the five yards per play, it's, you know, I wouldn't call it impressive, but it's certainly encouraging for this offense. Coming into the season, we kind of knew. We say the same thing. I said that Wisconsin and I were in the same boat every single year. You know, they can play great defense, have a strong running game, be physical up front. But, the you know, the offensive system, their role is just not going to allow them to compete. And you know, same goes right now. Spencer Petras, he's just not been good one bit. I don't think ever really in his career off to a pretty poor start, uh, looking at a 51% completion rate, 524 yards. He's got two picks, one touchdown. He's been just flat out poor his entire career, still is. And again, again, it's still kind of it's a scheme issue too. I think Petras is potentially more talented than he's showcasing. A lot of weapons departed. Though. I don't really, outside of Sam Laporta and Nico Regini, and then I, I don't really know who else. I mean, these are the only two guys from last year coming back. They of course had Charlie Jones, Tyrone Tracy transfer for, to Purdue after Iowa got you know allowed 530 or so passing yards to Purdue. Those guys transfer over there. Charlie Jones having a big year, so they have some talent get away because the scheme just really limits everybody. Laporta is the leading pass catcher right now with 16 grabs, 154 yards. Arlan Bruce, he stepped up with 10 grabs, 132 yards, and the only touchdown, 5'10", 198-pounder. They don't have much playmaking at pass catcher. Look at running back. You know, there's a mixed back going into the year. Looks like LeSean Williams and Caleb Johnson have really emerged as the top two backs. 210-pounder uh, is LeSean. And Caleb Johnson, he's a freshman. He's been much more effective, six yards per carry. You know, 29 attempts, 174 yards. They both have two touchdowns. Both bigger backs. They're running behind an offensive line that, you know, they got some veterans back, but for the most part on the depth chart, a lot of inexperienced guys because last year, guys like Jack Plum, who was back, he was starting. They weren't great, though. They, of course, had Tyler Linderbaum, but it was still a very undersized offensive line, not a prototypical Big Ten offensive front from Iowa. Offense, Nick, flat out poor. I'm not really sure how they're going to score points in this game. Laporte is a chain mover, of course. Petros has to be smart with the football, and of course, they got to run the ball very well. That's something that they've really struggled to do over the last two years now because they're just so one-dimensional. It's not hard to stop this offense one bit. Certainly not helpful for Petros that his offensive line is really just seems to be non-existent. He's been sacked nine times already this season. The 524 yards is just a very low number. You know, the 51.1% completion percentage is just terrible across the board, right? It, it is the scheme, certainly, that definitely plays a role in it, but he is getting no help at all. Sam Laporta really is bailing him out. You know, the 9.6 yards per catch is really the best thing that would this really be said about this offense. Laporte is having a good year, good size tight end. I really, I thought he was going to be talented for his team this year. Caleb Johnson, also a bright spot, you know, young freshman playing well early on, but they're going to have to run the ball very efficiently this weekend. If they're going to want to even be keep up with this Michigan offense, they're going to, and they're going to have to run the ball because that defense, you know, this Iowa defense, I think this offense is really definitely handcuffing this program. We say it every year. That's just a problem with the scheme in, in Iowa. Can they continue to run the ball on Saturday? Can they run the ball and pick up some serious ground game? That's the only way they're going to be able to stay in this game. That leads us to the Wolverines defense. Jesse Minter takes over before Mike McDonald, who departs from last season. Only got three starters back from last year. But this unit's been playing pretty good to start the season. Had their hands full against Maryland, you know, 397 total yards. You know, the secondary is really getting tested. 269 allowed by Tag. You know, Tagaboa had that through the year. Those talented wide receivers were doing pretty well. Put up 27 points. Uh, you know, Junior Colson's off to another hot start. He was good for them last year. My biggest worry coming into the year really wasn't a worry. It was just who's going to step up. Because Michigan usually has these no-name guys who develop into superstars. And I was circling guys like Jalen Harrell, Mike Morris, and then, you know, Michael Barrett. He was an interesting player for me. And they haven't actually inserted him into the lineup. So he's been playing pretty solid for them. Mike Morris, though, four tackles for loss. Harrell, he's been solid. And Amazi Smith, he was one of those leading returning starters. 
that I was high on uh, on the defensive front, on the interior there. And he's been really good for them. Uh, Junior Colson, though, 30 tackles, leads the team. Barnett right behind him. Smith, though, has been a heck of a playmaker up front. And then after that, in secondary, R.J. Moten, he's been a heck of a playmaker. Uh, he had a pick against Maryland. Rod Moore, he's a he's a younger guy. He's also got an interception on the year. D.J. Turner, Jermaine Green, you know, a handful of veterans I just named. Mike Sandstrill, looks like he fully converted over to the nickel role. He played some pass catcher for them last year. I love the secondary. they got a lot of veterans. I think they're going to continue to evolve. Certainly had their hands full last week. And especially even when Tagovailoa got benched after a bad interception, the backup quarterback came in and led them right downfield for a touchdown make the score a lot closer so we're gonna pretty much eliminate the first three games they played against nobody what did you see against maryland that leads you to believe this is going to be a defense that's going to be a force to be reckoned with this season because i do like the energy they've gotten from their pass rush colson's great veteran secondary they have a lot of potential despite you know only returning those three starters i'm a fan of the way the secondary has kind of stepped up this year you know i think rod moore is playing a very solid season so far you know he's got half sacks and you know got 11 tackles total for him jalen harrell as well as a linebacker he's not having a bad season junior colson leading the way we kind of tend to be one of the leaders on this defense you know 30 tackles for him so far through four games not a bad number at all michael barrett as well he's playing pretty well at linebacker i like the way the secondary looks they made tonga viola uncomfortable last week you know he was really struggling of course he got benched and the backup quarterback coming from maryland Considering just how poor this Iowa offense is, I think the secondary will do just fine to really win the day in that regard. I don't think Iowa will be able to pass it to them on all. Well, that's on Iowa and Michigan, really. That's yet to be seen, leading more towards Iowa. I do like how they've kind of rotated these guys in the secondary. A lot of guys are getting significant minutes. Guys are getting tackles in different games. I like this sort of variety they have, different options they have defensive vacuum. Moten is a solid guy who rotates in 14 total tackles for him. I like what this defense is doing. I think it's a solid defense. I think they can only get better as the season goes on. This is not really a big test. They'll have bigger tests later on this season. But so far, the system's kind of working, and I think that these guys are stepping up. As long as Colson can continue to lead the way of his tackles, this defense should be fine. Looking at the Hawkeye defense, they're only allowing 5.8 points per game. Very staggering number through the first month of the year. They're on the field for 79 plays against Iowa State, only allowed 313 yards. That's just elite work there in that game, 274 plays. That's about, you know, well, about 70th in college football or so. So they have not been on the field as much as some of these other defenses, but their offense has been very poor. And that's a big, re- a big reason why is because they're just getting opponents out of there. The offense obviously does them no favors, 28% third down conversion rate for their offense. That's not good. You look at the defense, 33, which is a little bit higher than I feared it would be. You know, Iowa State, they had 10 of 20. I mean, you look at the third down attempts in their game, 16, 20, 19, 16. So they're on the field a lot. The offense does them no favors, but what they're able to do, they're able to keep teams from scoring any type of points. You look at this linebacking core, it's phenomenal. 39 tackles for Jack Campbell, and then Seth Benson has 30. Uh, Riley Moss in the secondary, Kevon Merriweather, some you know, real old-school veterans there for this defense. Phil Parker, he runs that cover two shell that just does great work against these opponents. Terry Roberts, you know, he had some struggles last year, but he's a veteran at this point in time at the other cornerback spot. Riley Moss, you know, he has a ball hawk. He had a handful of interceptions last year, a couple of pick sixes. Um, Cooper DeJohn, he stepped up. Three picks already for him. Sophomore out of Odebet, Iowa for them. So this unit every single year, we're talking about Michigan having no names, same could be said about this football team last year. As certain including guys like Zan Van Volkenberg to step up. Certainly did. Now he departs, but you look at a veteran defensive line. Lucas Van Ness, he's probably the youngest guy there. He's probably their best at defensive tackle, like John Wagner. Joe Evans, he's been around a long time. He's a great playmaker. This is going to be a really tough unit for Michigan, the crack, Nick, especially when this pass rush gets going. You look at Van Ness, he's got three. You know, Aaron Graves, a freshman, stepping up a two and a half. So these guys, they have a heck of a rotation on this defensive front. Elite linebackers, some really good defensive backs. What's the key to crack this cover two shell for Michigan? And how do you think they'll perform here with the home crowd? Uh, you know, whistling in Michigan's ear. This is a tough defense for sure. Jack Campbell's a guy I highlighted in the preseason. I thought he'd have a really strong season for Iowa. 38 total tackles for him so far. Really exceeding my expectations already. It's really season. Cooper DeJohn as well. 24 total tackles for him, plus the five pass breakups, three interceptions. Love the secondary. They've really been good against against the passing game so far this year. They've really been trying to limit. They've been on the, on the field a whole lot. Certainly the offense is not helping with that. But this team has been bending, not breaking. And I really like to see that from this Iowa team. You know, Aaron Graves and their guy, when you look at it, you hit it, you know, two and a half sacks already this season, six total tackles for the freshman. These guys are stepping up when they need to. They have great rotation. They have a lot of guys they can trust bringing it out. You know, Logan Lee's another guy that's having a good season. 16 total tackles, at one and a half sacks already this season. I love the rotation. I love the ability here. The linebackers, too, leading the team with 38 and 30 tackles, respectively. 
this is such a solid team on defense. Michigan's going to have to really try to find that balance of running the ball and passing the ball to be able to beat this Iowa defense. They, they've they been stonewalling a lot of teams so far this season. They stonewalled Nevada, stonewalled Rutgers. And it's really kind of a bright spot on what is a pretty down year in Iowa so far. As they just really don't have the talent on offense to produce. I like this defense. I think this game will, game will be a close game simply because Iowa's defense will be tough to break early on in the game. And, you know, Justin Jacobs, Noah Shannon, two guys that were highly impactful performers for them last year. They're starting to get back and being healthy, so they might get a full go in this game. We'll see what happens. But those are two key guys that have not played, and they've already been elite. Like you said, Logan Lee, 48 tackles last year. These guys just have plenty of rotation. They're not overwhelming with size or anything, but they have plenty of players that are physical and productive, you know, in all three levels. So this is going to be very tough defense all year long, as always. Looking at team comparisons, you know, I'm going to give everything to Michigan – for the offense, no real discussion there. And then I'm going to give everything for the defense to Iowa. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting when you look at this because one team's great on offense, one team's really great on defense. Michigan, they have a pretty respectable defense themselves. It's going to be one of the top in the conference. Who has the edge, though, when you look at these team comparisons, Nick? Because it's clear in day who has the edge at specific position or groups. But when it comes to, you know, on the gridiron, who do you think really has the edge as a more complete team? I know Michigan's been playing pretty poor opposition, but when you look at the points per game, they have 50 points per game so far this season. Iowa has 17. Their defense has given up 11 points per game. Iowa's given up 5.8. For me, I just think that Michigan's offense is a little bit better than Michigan than Iowa's defense. I think that really is going to tip the scales this weekend for in Michigan's favor. So we got the final thoughts on the prediction. You know, I think for Michigan, the biggest key is keep McCarthy comfortable. You don't want him to get rattled. You're talking about there earlier. You know, make sure he's good in the pocket. And you don't want him to try to make too much happen. You cannot turn the ball over against this defense. This offense is already bad enough. You do them any favors, give them points, they will make you pay. It doesn't matter if you gift wrap them two field goals. That's sometimes the only difference they need to beat you because they will beat you six to nothing or something like that. That's what Iowa does. That's the brand of football they want to play. And, you know, for the Hawkeyes, the biggest key is just find anything on offense. Find some type of pulse. Give your defense just a slight breather. Um, I don't know where they're going to get offense from. I'm going to pick them to win the game anyways. A very low scoring contest and you know this is college football obviously people are gonna be like oh you know there's no way this happens it's only a 10 point line so obviously the bookies are kind of circling this one as a potential upset michigan i wasn't exactly thrilled with their offense last week obviously they ran the ball very well but if they didn't have at least half those yards from quorum uh, you know whatever you know half of 243 is if they had half of that they would have probably lost that game they're not going to run like that here against iowa i think they're really gonna be in for a long day running the ball and that's going to put a lot on mccarthy's shoulders and i think he's highly impressive a very young talent's going to do a lot. Last week, I was not overly impressed, despite the efficiency. I think coming on the road to Kinnick's going to be a big challenge. You know, obviously, Michigan hammered Iowa just a couple of months ago in the Big Ten title game, but the last two contests, or last three, really, that were in, that were not at neutral site, 2019, 10-3, Michigan won, 14-13, Iowa won in 2016, and then before that, 24-21, Iowa in 2013. You know, these are typically low-scoring contests. Expect the same here. I have Iowa beating Michigan. I hope I'm wrong because I like the Wolverines and I'm from the state. So I kind of root for them a little bit more uh, than most people. And I think they're a legit threat to Ohio State. But I picked them to lose this game in the preseason. I don't know how Iowa's going to score points, but their defense can usually do that for them. I think they'll kick a few field goals, a defensive turnover that will set them up for some scores. Uh, and that's going to be the difference maker for me. You know, you know, What's your prediction for this game? Do you agree with me? Or do you think McCarthy and the Wolverines will have no issues here with this tough Hawkeye defense? I think it's going to be a close game. I totally agree that I think Iowa should cover the spread of 10 and a half. I think Michigan's going to win this game just simply because I think that offensive talent will bail them out in the right moments and, they'll, and they're going to wear down that Iowa defense by simply Iowa's just being on the field for way too long this game. I'm going to have a close game. I'm going to say something like 14 to 9. I think Michigan will find a way to score late the game and win the game. Iowa will have to settle for a couple of field goals, but make this a close contest. This is certainly going to be a ground and pound type of close game. You know, there's no way that either team puts up more than 20 points. The over under is at 42. I definitely think hammer the under on this one. This is a game that's going to stay under that line for sure. But I have Michigan just winning this game because I, I just purely think that the talent they have on offense outweighs the talent Iowa has on defense at this moment in time. I think McCarthy will find a groove late in the game, get comfortable, and lead the team on a game. There's certainly a potential for another offensive explosion like there was in Indianapolis last week. I could totally, totally see that happening as well. Big opportunity to see how good this offensive line is because last year they were phenomenal, of course. I said that one blemish late in the year against Georgia. They were great top to bottom in conference play. So there's certainly that possibility they just completely overwhelm Iowa. And if they start to do that and they start to have that balance, we're probably going to see a 45 to 10 type of game because I definitely think that, you know, after, after Iowa cannot play down one bit. You know, that's not their strong suit. They don't have a strong suit on offense one bit. So if they start to get down, Michigan has that balance. We're going to see a big time blowout. out. Oh, I'm going to add.
Oh, no, yeah, I just agree with that. Yeah. No, enough on that. You nailed it there. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. Nick, as always, appreciate you joining me. Yeah, thank you so much. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.